Hello, welcome to uh, Words of This Life uh, Daily Bible Meditation. So I'm Brian Reynolds. Uh, today I want to look at uh, some Old Testament prophecies uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Messiah, that show him to be uh, Jehovah, that Jesus is Jehovah. Um, of course, the whole Bible from beginning to end, especially the New Testament, uh, reveals to us uh, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not so much trying to prove that today, uh, and it's a huge study, uh, and all true Christians, of course, hold to that. But I just want to look at um, probably five or six uh, prophecies in the Old Testament that clearly show that Jesus is Jehovah. And I, I say Jehovah, probably better uh, would be the word Yahweh. Um, Jehovah was um, a 19th century uh, uh, word that was used to describe uh, the four-letter uh, tetragrammaton, which is the divine name that's given to us uh, in Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 6. Uh, revealed there, of course, um, but starts right at the beginning of the Bible. We get Jehovah in, in, in the creation account, but the, the, um, the I Am revealed to Moses in the burning bush. Um, but in the Hebrew, there is uh, no vowels uh, to the divine name. It's just uh, consonants. Uh, and in English, it would be Y-H-W-H. And it's always been a little bit of a puzzle, actually, how, how to pronounce that. In fact, the Jewish people, the, at least the Orthodox Jews, don't pronounce it at all. It's a divine name, sacred name. They won't uh, put it upon their lips um, in conversation or even worship. But um, uh, essentially, the meaning is clear. Uh, it, it means uh, the, the, the being one, uh, the um, uh, self-existent one. In fact, in the French Bible, uh, what we call Jehovah, or the Lord, is translated uh, as the Eternal, which probably more closely captures the meaning of the name. Um, uh, interestingly, in the um, Old Testament, uh, we get the name Lord, uh, but in the New Testament, uh, we have Lord as well. But the, the word for Lord in the New Testament is a uh, Greek word, is Kyrios. If we were to read the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, there uh, the Greek uses kurios for Jehovah. And when we come to the New Testament, the New Testament translators used kurios. They're again sort of uh, buttressing the idea, supporting the idea, proving the idea really, showing the idea that Jesus is indeed uh, the, the uh, Jehovah of the Old Testament. Now, I don't want to go too much into that. But um, it's sufficient to say that, that uh, the divine name, uh, Yahweh, is what we're looking at here, and that Jesus is Yo Yahweh, Jesus is Jehovah. The, the, the vowels were, were added later on uh, to give the, the pronunciation Jehovah in English, and then now scholars more uh, recently feel that uh, Yahweh is probably closer to the, to the original. But be that as it may, uh, let's turn uh, first in our Bibles to Isaiah 40. Now, I'm reading from my old King James Bible, and the only reason I am is because I have some of my notes in here. Uh, but probably, for uh, literal accuracy, you probably may better look at, uh, for example, the New American Standard, uh, or the Darby Bible, or even the ESV. So in Isaiah chapter 40, we get these words, Comfort you, comfort you, my people, verse 1, saith uh, your God. Speak comfortably, to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is accomplished, uh, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And then we get this amazing prophecy that's quoted in all four Gospels in reference to John the Baptist. Verse 3, the voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, prepare ye the way of, of Jehovah, of Yahweh, uh, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, uh, in this prophecy, we get uh, John the Baptist preparing the way of the Lord, preparing the way of Jehovah, of Yahweh. Uh, just as a side note, for those who perhaps aren't familiar with this. When, we, when you read Lord uh, in, in our Bible, in the Old Testament, we know it's Yahweh generally when it's in the uppercase letters. 
So if it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, then it's Jehovah, Yahweh. If it's a Lord with the, the, the last three letters being in the small case, generally it's Adonai, that is Supreme Master, or Lord, properly speaking. But in this prophecy, uh, uh, John the Baptist is, is brought before us. Now, it's very interesting uh, when we look at Isaiah because Isaiah is essentially divided into two parts. Um, chapters 1 to chapter 39 and chapter 40 to the end is chapter 66. And um, now the liberal scholars, uh, they take this and try to make two Isaiahs. They call it Dutra Isaiah. But um, there are not two Isaiahs. We believe there's one Isaiah who wrote uh, both parts. But there are definitely two sections. And the section, second section opens up with Isaiah chapter 40. And we get John the Baptist introducing Jehovah to make straight his paths, to level the mountains, to lift the valleys, to, to clear the ground for Yahweh as he comes to his people. Now when we read the New Testament, in John the Baptist, he presents the coming of the Lord Jesus. And so in, in, in comparison of these two passages, the New Testament, the Old Testament, we see very clearly that the Lord Jesus is Jehovah. John the Baptist is preparing the way for Jehovah. John the Baptist is preparing the way for Yahweh, for Jehovah. Uh, in verse 9, we get, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Jehu Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God. The King James here has Lord God, but should be Lord uh, Jehovah, Adonai Jehovah, will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Both his reward is with him, and his work is before him. So we get here, uh, God is coming to visit Judah. And John the Baptist, the voice crying in the wilderness, he's announcing him. And we see that he's Adonai, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh. Now, we get this beginning of the section, second section, as I say, of Isaiah, which really shows us the beginning of the Gospels. The four Gospels all open essentially with John the Baptist uh, presenting the Lord Jesus to us. How interesting when we come to the end of Isaiah chapter 66 we get the prophet speaking about the new heaven and new earth and when we come to the end of the New Testament we get the new heaven and new earth presented to us from the pen of uh, the Apostle John. So some have said Isaiah is the evangelist of the Old Testament. He's sort of the gospel. He's the fifth gospel. Just an interesting side point. But very clearly from this passage, it's, it shows to us that, that Jesus is Jehovah. Now, of course, if we drop back in uh, Isaiah to chapter 6, uh, we get another clear reference. We see uh, Isaiah writing that in the year, this is verse 1, Isaiah chapter 6, that King Uzziah died. I also saw the Lord, that's actually Adonai, sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, is Jehovah of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And then in verse 5 it says, then said I, Woe is me, for I am done. This is Isaiah speaking, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, Jehovah of hosts. Here we get the vision of Jehovah. Uh, Isaiah sees him sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, so holy, the thrice holy God. The angels cover their eyes, they cover their feet in reverence for him and in worship for him. Uh, but interestingly, uh, when we come to the New Testament and we read in John's Gospel, uh, chapter 12, we have uh, the Apostle John speaking about this uh, in verse um, 41. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Now, I can't take the time to go into it in too much detail, but just if you look at the context of which in which John is quoting uh, this verse from uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 6, clearly John is connecting it with the Lord Jesus. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory, whose glory? Christ's glory, and spoke of him. That is, when Isaiah saw 
uh, Jehovah high and lifted up. He saw Christ's glory. That's one of the clearest uh, references in the Bible, that Jesus is Jehovah. And then if we uh, drop ahead a little to Isaiah chapter 8, uh, we get another one. In verse uh, 13 of chapter 8, um, Isaiah says, Sanctify the Lord of hosts, Jehovah of hosts himself. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. The Apostle Peter quotes this in reference to the Lord Jesus in his epistle, chapter 3, verse 14, where he says, Sanctify the Lord Christ in your hearts. Now, you may want to check that in the New American Standard Translation or in the Darby Translation. You'll get a clear rendering of that. The King James is a little off in that. But clearly, the, the, the literal, most accurate Greek manuscripts uh, have that sanctify the Lord Christ in your hearts. Or some have sanctify Christ the Lord in your heart. Um, he's quoting, Peter's quoting from Isaiah chapter 8, where it's Jehovah hosts, Yahweh of hosts. And then in verse 14, he goes on and he says, And he, that is Jehovah host, shall be for a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense for the houses of Israel, and a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He's saying that this Jehovah host will be a stumbling stone for many people uh, in Jerusalem and many people in Israel, the both houses of Israel, the, the, the Judah and the northern tribes of Israel. Uh, he's a stumbling stone. Again, uh, this is referenced uh, in connection with the Lord Jesus in the New Testament, uh, specifically in Peter's epistle. Uh, chapter one, verse uh, ch chapter two, I should say, uh, verse eight, and so on we go. Uh, if we turn to Isaiah chapter forty-five uh, and verse twenty-one, uh, we get uh, another uh, reference to Jehovah here in connection with the Lord Jesus, and it goes like this, starting verse twenty-one, in the middle of the verse: There is no god else beside me a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. So clearly, it's God who's speaking. Here is Elohim, God speaking. Then verse 22, Look unto me, and be you saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. I shall not return. Uh, that unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear or confess. Surely shall one say, in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. That is in Jehovah. So God is saying here, Jehovah is saying, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear or confess. The Apostle Paul, of course, uh, uses this text in Philippians chapter 2 in relation to the Lord Jesus, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Another reference is in Jeremiah uh, chapter 23. And this is a messianic prophecy as well. Uh, verse 5, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute a justice and judgment in the earth. And in his days shall Judah be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. This is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. That is, uh, Jehovah our righteousness. The Lord there is in all uppercase letters. So it's Yahweh, it's Jehovah, who is our righteousness. Clearly a, a messianic prophecy that some would, uh, one would come from the line of David who would be a king. A and this king would save Israel in that day, uh, deliver Israel, and that he would be called the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah our righteousness. Again, in the New Testament is brought before us um, uh, on several occasions that the Lord Jesus is our righteousness. We've been justified through him, through faith in him. Christ has been made unto us uh, righteousness, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. He's been made unto us righteousness. And um, we don't have the time to, to look into the topic of righteousness, but I just read these verses to bring it before us, uh, the truth uh, that Jesus is Jehovah. He is our righteousness. Messiah is our righteousness. 
and Messiah is Jehovah. Now one final reference is, is in Zechariah chapter 14 where we get the, this amazing uh, prophecy um, and it says so I better get there, Zechariah chapter 14 uh, verse 4 and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a, a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove to the north and half to the south. Now I don't have the time to really uh, develop the prophetic side of this but if we back up to verse 3 we'll see that it says, Then shall the Lord, that is Jehovah, Yahweh, go forth and fight against those notion, nations as when he fought in the day of battle. We get a prophetic view of Armageddon here. But it goes on to say, as I've already read in verse 4, And his, that is Jehovah's feet, shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives. Now I've had some say to me, Brian, you don't actually, literally, actually believe that Jehovah will literally stand on the Mount of Olives. That's impossible. Now these are Christians speaking. And my answer to them is this, is that Jehovah has already uh, stood on the Mount of Olives. He sat on the Mount of Olives when he gave us the Mount Olivet Discourse and gave us a panoramic view of, of, of prophetic events. He knelt on the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of his betrayal. He wept from the Mount of Olives and cried over Jerusalem in Luke uh, chapter 19. Um, he ascended from the uh, Mount of Olives in uh, Acts chapter 1 and the angel said, You men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up and gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven shall so come again in, in like manner to you from heaven. So uh, he will stand again on the Mount of Olives. He's been there and he will come there again. Clearly the prophecy brings us before us. And then down in verse 5, um, uh, Zechariah says, The Lord, that is Jehovah, my God, shall come, and all the saints with thee. This is referred to in Jude. The prophet Jude speaks of this. And um, there's a reference there to Enoch, uh, the book of Enoch, but we have the same reference here. The Lord, my God, shall come, and all the saints with you. The Lord is coming. The Lord Jesus is coming. And he is Jehovah. I've written a little book on the subject. A lot more detail than what I've given you today. And it's called simply, Jesus is Jehovah. Now if you like a copy of that book, uh, you could uh, contact Believer's Bookshelf Canada. I just Google uh, Believer's Bookshelf Canada. Or www.bbcan.org. That's bbcan.org. Believer's Bookshelf Canada. It's not that expensive. I think it's around eight or nine dollars, but um, it treats the subject that we looked at today in, in some more detail, and uh, you may find it interesting. You may find it helpful. I hope so.